Hi Leonard, thank you so much for your time and for this interview. Can you please introduce yourself? Um, yeah, my name is, well, my name is Leonard Otis. Um, I'm from the Netherlands. I'm a chess professional. Uh, not that I play so much, but I'm more like a creative professional. I do a lot of things behind the scenes at chess tournaments. Right. You have played multiple rules at chess tournaments. Can you please list all of them? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a long list. Uh, most of the time I'm actually doing the DGT boards, so I'm the live broadcast of the chess moves um, and photography. Those are the things that I usually combine when I work for chess tournaments. Um, here I'm actually making the video broadcast, um, so I'm more you know, dealing with video and all kinds of like technical things behind, behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes I um, make websites of tournaments or I, um, um, I'm, I'm a co-organizer of some tournaments in the Netherlands. Um, and for sure, there are some other things that I do in chess. Um, oh yeah, sometimes I'm actually uh, the interviewer. All right. How did your journey in chess start? Uh, what was your first contact with the game and what got you hooked up in this game? Yeah, I'm, I'm from a chess family. I mean, my dad always played chess, so chess was always around. Uh, he invited friends over to our house. Um, I have a brother who also plays chess. He's an international master himself. Um, so yeah, we've, I've, I've played a lot of, lot of chess tournaments um, when I was younger. Um, in the Netherlands, we have a very good chess culture uh, with a lot of chess tournaments, uh, but also like, um, a lot of like, active chess clubs and organizations who, uh, who do things for chess. Um, so for me, it was very natural actually to have a transition from like, a chess player to someone who works behind the scenes, because there was always like some work that I could do at, at chess tournaments. Um, DGT, uh, the, the company, is a Dutch, uh, is, is from the Netherlands. So that's, there's, there's a lot of like connections between the Netherlands and the things that I do right now. Um, and uh, yeah, basically like, I started to play chess since I was like, I don't know, like I, I moved the first pieces when I was a baby. Uh, I joined a chess club maybe when I was 10 or something, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, chess was always there. Uh, for the public, you are mostly known as one of the best chess photographers. When and why did you decide to take up photography? Um, when I started with photography, um, I, I've, I've never done photography outside of chess. So everything that I do with photography is actually in, in chess and for chess tournaments. Um, I started basically because I was bored running DGT boards. I was operating DGT boards at some tournaments and I had a lot of spare time. And I was like, basically like behind my computer looking at the boards and nothing went wrong. So like I, was, I had to kill some time. Um, I had a camera already um, because I was shooting some videos for, for some other uh, chess events. So I always brought like this camera with me and it could also take photos. So I started to take photos um, and it was actually at the US Championships 2014 and later on also in Sigfield Cup the same year. And um, so I started to take some photos and what I saw was that um, those photos were being used on chessbase.com and some other websites. And I was like, oh wow, that's pretty cool, you know, like I'm, I do something and it's actually being used. It's useful. And, uh, and then I started to watch a lot of like photography tutorials. Um, and basically I'm kind of like self-taught in, in photography. And uh, now I have my own style a little bit and, and I, I really enjoy taking photos. I like the creative aspect of it, you know. Leonard, what are the most memorable moments that you have had a chance to capture with your camera and the photos that you are most fond of? Um, yeah, one, one event that, that really um, strikes me is that um, is a world record attempt of Timur Gureyev. He was doing a 48 board blindfold simul in Las Vegas and, uh, and he asked me to, to, to you know, to join and, uh, and to take some photos and I was broadcasting all the games there. And, um, and that was like such a journey, like um, to have like uh, Timur like on the spinning bike and the whole thing lasted so long. After three hours, um, he had a couple of friends with him and they were making like raw food, you know, like uh, juices and stuff. And, uh, and that guy who was preparing all the food, raw food master Joe, he, he got hungry himself. So he wanted to prepare some meals in the kitchen of the, of the building where we were playing. And uh, so he was making some sausages and then the fire alarm went off. So the fire trucks came, we had to stop the blindfold simul. Uh, Timur was escorted somewhere else. So like after three hours with all these moves in his head, you know, 
he he had to go somewhere else and wait for the for the fire truck for the fire department to clear the building um, and that was quite kind of like an adventure and then like the whole the whole thing lasted like 19 hours or something it was amazing and uh, and he broke the world record so that's that's something that I'm kind of yeah, proud of to 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 to, to be able to actually film, uh, to be able to take photos of it and, uh, and document it. Um, and then like in terms of like my favorite photos, I don't know, um, every new event I take photos that I'm happy with and you always like make a little bit of prog uh, progress. Um, but there are some photos that I took at a uh, tournament that Simon, William or Simon Williams organized in, uh, in London. It was in a crypt, like a kind of like a dungeon. Like it was like um, in the basement of a church. So it was a very spooky uh, horror uh, environment, let's say. And people were dressed up and uh, it was very cool to take photos. So some of my memorable photos were from that event. What do you try to achieve when you are assigned to cover the chess event as a photographer? What is your goal that you had in, in your mind when you're entering the playing venue with your camera? <laughs> Um, yeah, every, every tournament is different and every tournament uh, requires a different type of photography sometimes. Um, if I take photos for the Grand Chess Tour, there's only 10 players. Um, you just want to make sure that, that you capture like, all the players on day one, have some overview shots and, and stuff. And then from day two onwards, you can just try to be more creative. And then it just kind of like depends, like are, is there any audience? Um, are there nice colors, yes or no? I mean, like in general, like chess, um, chess venues are not known to be very colorful or very, like there's not so many lights or things. It's very basic um, stuff. So I'm always happy when I'm in a venue where, where there is something creative and where I can actually uh, yeah, do something nice. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and what I really like about the tournaments itself is uh, the tension, because in the end there has to be a winner, right? So I, I really like to capture those emotions, like the emotions of winning and losing a game, but also like winning the tournament itself. And uh, some players are more um, suitable for, for that, right? So Jan Nepomniachtchi, for example, like he is very, um, it's very visual. If, uh, and, and the same for Magnus, like you can read their faces, you know, if they're happy or unhappy, if they make a blunder or not, you, you can see it from their face. So that's, that's something that I like to capture. Um, and then some other players um, are, you know, they have like this poker face that you cannot really tell anything about. But like, yeah, the emotions and like to, to show who wins the tournament, that's something that I really like to do. You're a pretty decent player yourself. What do you enjoy the most? in chess to play online games, to play over the board, maybe classical games, maybe bug house or blitz? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I used to play a lot of chess. Like I, I used to play like more than 100 tournament games or like classical games a year. Um, that was basically like up to the age of like 22 or something. And, I, and then I started my journey in, in, in chess with photography and DGT boards and stuff. And I started to play less and less. And now I'm only playing like a few classical games a year. Um, but yeah, just before this match, um, I was playing a Dutch league. Uh, so it was like one classical game and I, I just really enjoyed it. You know, like to, to be at a chessboard for four or five hours, try to beat your opponent. There's no phones, no other distractions. Um, and that's, uh, that, that's something that I really like. Um, but during the pandemic, I started to play uh, online a lot. And uh, I got really hooked on to a variant of chess. It's called three check. So the, the goal of the game is like to give three checks. And the first who gives three checks wins the, wins the game. And uh, I started to really like do a lot of research on the game itself. I did a lot of like opening, um, opening training, but also I tried to make new novelties in, uh, in, in the opening, uh, analyzing your opponents. Um, even like work, working with neural networks in this variant of, of chess. So I, like, when I, once I try to do something, I, I really try to do it good um, and, and put a lot of time and effort in it. And uh, I think like with three check, it went a little bit off the rails here. Uh, <laughs> I spent too much time, but I really enjoyed it. For any chess fan, it is a great experience to attend a world championship. 
you have the chance to get the experience to a highest level as you are literally watching everything that happens here from multiple angles and cameras. Are you enjoying this match? Uh, this match particularly? Yeah, I mean, it gets, it's a very interesting match, right? Between uh, Nepom Niachi and Ding. Uh, we will crown the new world champion basically after the Carlson era. Um, and well, the games have been fantastic so far, right? Like so many wins, so many upsets. Um, I, it, it's really cool uh, to actually, um, you know, follow this match closely. Um, and I have like the privilege because I see all the camera angles live. So this match is also known for uh, the players going to the rest areas a lot, right? And I have like access to the video cameras on the rest, <laughs> on their rest area. So like I, I, I can see the players basically all the time. I can see what they do in the rest areas. It's kind of creepy sometimes because uh, we definitely do, do not show everything what's, what's going on there. But like, yeah, we just count the amount of bananas that Ding is eating, you know, like those type of things. Um, and it's, 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 it's really cool to actually like feel the tension and especially like, uh, as a photographer, I get actually close to the players, right? I'm in the playing hall, I can feel the players, I can, you, you can spot if they have a good, good night's sleep, if they're tense or not. And um, if you're not able to go to the playing hall, you kind of like lose this privilege of like feeling the tension from like, well, first hand basically. But um, to have like all these screens with like the 16 cameras in the playing hall, um, that is actually a, a, a nice replacement, so <laughs> I'm, I, I don't get bored here, no. How many chess events do you work uh, at average per year? Oh, I'm, I guess I'm involved with between 15 and 20 tournaments a year, um, which is actually a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, I have like this fear of missing out sometimes, so like uh, when there's a tournament, even like at this match, there's another tournament going on in Spain right now. And I, I look at the photos, I'm like, shit, like I want to be there, you know, like. Um, I think we're so, we have <laughs> the particular tournament in mind, both of us, which is happening in Spain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, uh, it, 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 I don't know, like the chess community is so nice. Like it's full of like young people, very interesting people, smart people. Um, so it, it, it's just like, it's a very nice environment for me to, to be at. So uh, every event that I have the chance to, to go, I, I, like to, I like to visit or to work. Um, but yeah, like in general, like I do 15, 20 tournaments a year in different capacities. That's a lot. And I guess uh, you have to travel a lot of countries because of the work. And mm -hmm. then of course, because of the, just the travel. So we can call you a globetrotter. So how many countries have you, have, have you visited, if you have counted, and uh, the countries that works uh, really well for chess, that you, you feel that this is a chess country, they have mm -hmm. chess culture in this country? Yeah, I've, so far I've been to like 70 countries, um, some of them just for holidays, uh, others for, for chess. Um, with chess, basically, we, we just go to, the, mostly it's like to the same type of countries, right? Like, it's already like second time in Kazakhstan within uh, four months time. Um, I go to St. Louis a lot in the States. Uh, I have to remember in Wijkenzee and Norway chess. So basically like the chess calendar has a lot of like the same locations and uh, um, and if you ask me about like the which country has a lot of passion you know for for chess um, I want to mention like Wijkenzee the tournament the Tata Steel chess tournament in the Netherlands to have like this enormous hall with like 500 amateurs playing plus the world elite players, right? The Magnus plays in the same hole as like um, any beginner in chess or advanced player or aspiring international master. Like uh, that, that's really cool. Uh, but on the other hand, um, we've been to a couple of tournaments in India lately and you've, you really feel the passion from the spectators and the, the amount of volunteers that are there and everybody wants to take a selfie with you and they they know everybody from the from the chess base india youtube channels you know like the, there are so many chess fans there that uh, that, that i really enjoy it like the, the passion that they have and now you also see it with the amount of grandmasters coming up um, I, I foresee a very bright future for for indian chess if chess didn't exist in your life what do you think would be your career <laughs> um, well, I've, I've studied physics. Um, I mean, I like the technical aspect of that, but like not the creative 
well, I, I couldn't put my creativity there. Um, but one thing that I kind of like, or like really like to do, is like to make something that other people can enjoy. So um, that could be like working for a museum where people like to go to, it could be just like chess, that people watch the, the chess tournaments online in their spare time. And I like it that I can provide something for people who enjoy things in their spare time. Um, so yeah, there's, there could be a range, uh, like a big range of, of things, like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> like, we're, okay, not working for, for holiday rentals or something, but like, yeah, I don't know, like, uh, in, in, in general, I have a passion for sports. I watch a lot of sports. Um, yesterday during the game, well, not during the game, but after the game, I was watching football and cycling at the same time. So I, I don't know, like, I, I like to do things with sports, to, to be honest, and... Uh, yeah, maybe one day I can explore more things outside of chess, but so far I, I like chess so much. Great, thank you so much for the interview and mm -hmm. of course for your time, Leonard. And I wish you to have more uh, very impressive captures that you can then mm -hmm. later us show to all of us. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much.